Megalodon, the biggest and greatest shark that ever swam in the oceans of planet Earth. The Leviathan, a prehistoric whale of epic proportions. What if the pair came to blows? One thing's for sure, there'd be an almighty rumble in the ocean. So, the Megalodon is an extinct species of huge shark that swam its last 2.6 million years ago. Its name, by the way, translates to big tooth and, well, have a look at a model of its jaw. Hello there, big teeth. By analyzing fossils, it is thought that the Megalodon was 50 feet long and 50 tons in weight, so 50,000 kilos. The Megalodon is thought to be an uber version of its smaller living relative, the great white shark. The Leviathan went extinct about 5 million years ago and was a right old whopper of a sperm whale, measuring up to 57 feet long and weighing up to 57 tons. This ocean liner of a mammal had the largest teeth of any predator ever known to live. Already, we're noticing the Leviathan has the slight edge when it comes to size. Both predators are big, but the whale was thought to be bigger. Of course, it isn't all about size. How does old Big Tooth Shark measure up against massive Nasha Whale? It seems that while the Megalodon had the most powerful and forceful bite of all time, the Leviathan's teeth were thought to be a foot long, which is insane. The Leviathan may have been bigger and bitier than the Megalodon, but it was less streamlined and less nimble. Depending on the circumstances of an attack, the Megalodon could have taken fast chunks of the Leviathan before it had a chance to attack in retaliation. The shark was also thought to have a pretty solid attack strategy, biting off its prey's fins and incapacitating it. Again though, this is circumstantial and relies on the Megalodon getting the first bite in. If the Leviathan had attacked first, it could take a bigger chomp out of old Sharky. Also, whales are known to have some of the biggest brains in the world. The Leviathan was no exception. Honey was brainy. While the Leviathan was a good problem solver, the Megalodon was more primitive and maybe might not have been the smartest fighter, meaning it couldn't outthink the Leviathan, which would be a big issue for its survival if they did ever fight. Both the Megalodon and the Leviathan preyed on large animals. It seems so far like the Leviathan should be the winner, although it is worth mentioning that the impressive whale enjoyed less years swimming in the ocean, living between 1 to 5 million years, while the Megalodon lived for 20 million years, which in some ways makes it a victor. Their oceanic years did overlap towards the end of their lives, but we don't know for a fact if the pair ever came to blows. It is quite possible given their sizes, they would have avoided one another, save for a few passing glares. One fun thing to mention, while Leviathan is the name given to the prehistoric sperm whale, it was actually named after a sea monster mentioned in the Hebrew Bible and present in Jewish lore. The Leviathan is a ferocious sea monster, said to be a gigantic queen of the sea, conquerable only by gods. If it was this Leviathan versus the Megalodon, there would be no contest. Lady sea dragon would eat Sharky as a snack for afternoon tea. In reality though, if the Megalodon and the prehistoric whale did fight, it would depend on who struck first and what their motivation was to pick a winner. I would say the Leviathan has the edge though. If they did end up fighting, all other sea creatures may want to get out of the way for fear of total carnage. Monster snake versus ginormous tiger. Well, this sounds interesting. Who would win? Find out here! At the moment, we're on a weird trend of virtually fighting extinct super animals. Why? Just cuz. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate, and today we're asking what if a saber toothed tiger fought a titanoboa snake? As a Slytherin, I'm forever on team snake. But what about you? Are you snake or are you tiger? Okay, the saber toothed tiger, or the Smilodon to use its official name. Now, they lived between 2.5 million years ago and 10,000 years ago. Fun fact, despite its name, it isn't actually closely related to the tiger. Anyway, the old saber tooth was, as its colloquial name suggests, a toothy old chap with fangy canine teeth that measured around 28 centimeters long, almost as long as a medium ruler stick, which, you know, 
pretty long for a tooth. The biggest of the saber tooths would come up to an average human male's bicep, measuring roughly 120 centimeters in height and weighing a hefty 880 pounds. Honey was an adept killer known to take down large herbivores, including beasts like bison and camels. The Titanoboa lived 60 million years ago for roughly 2 million years. When its fossils were found in Colombia, it was confirmed to be the largest snake to have ever existed. This great the great snake was 12.8 meters long, so over 10 times the height of the saber tooth, and it weighed around 2,500 pounds. So Junky. Right, okay, so early on we can already see that the boa is bigger and heavier than the tiger, although so were bison and camel, so maybe the tiger had a trick up its stripy sleeve. Both the saber tooth and the titana boas were thought to be apex predators, top of the food chain with no natural predators, so it's unlikely that they would ever get into a fight. Yeah, yeah, Rebecca, but what if they did though? Well, the only common ground they possibly shared would be Columbia, the only known habitat of the titana boa, although the closest is saber tooth really got we think was Brazil. Anyway, whatever, get them fighting, I hear you. While we suspect that the saber tooth kills by holding its prey down with its forelimbs and biting it, we aren't too sure how the titana boa would kill. If it was anything like the boa constrictor, it is likely it would have squeezed its prey to death and swallowed it whole. And as we remember, it was a big snake, so it could probably take down big things. It wasn't thought to be a venomous snake, which is a bit of a shame for our snaky trump card, but still, I think Chappy Snake has the upper hand, or a tail. It's hard to tell exactly what would go down and how the fight would start, but let's say that Snakey Baby is waiting in a watering hole. Snakes are much better at hiding than tigers, and in water, it could be the perfect place to strike. While the saber tooth could take a sizable bite of the Titana Boa, it is much bigger and thicker, so probably wouldn't cause any irreparable damage. We know the main tactic for the saber tooth was to hold down its prey with its paws, but that would be impossible here, again, because Titana boa is simply too big. We don't know exactly how big the snake's fangs were, so I don't know what the bite back would be like, but being much bigger than the tiger and uncontained, I have no doubt that it might not even need its teeth. The boa could wrap itself around the saber tooth easily, squeeze, and then feast for days, all the while recovering from any injuries sustained during combat. Fun fact for you though, this may be Snakey's first taste of mammal, as it is thought that they ate fish. Either way, in the death match in question, Good old snake wins. That was then, and this is now though. Evolution has leveled up the playing field, and although the Titana boa would have obliterated the saber tooth, these days tigers and boas do occasionally come to blows, with the tigers tend to come out as victors. But they are much bigger than Mr. Snake. Well, we've had our fun, haven't we? What if the Kronosaurus fought the Kraken? Without further delay, release the Kraken and the Chromosaurus. The Kraken, a legendary cephalopod that has terrorized sailors since the moment humanity could row a boat, is a giant sea monster that reportedly rules over the deep, deep parts of the seven seas. The Chromosaurus, the lizard of Kronos, a terrifying giant proto-crocodile named after the leader of the Greek Titans. It lived in the early Cretaceous period and was unrivaled in its efficiency as a carnivorous sea monster. Let's begin by sizing these beasts up. Scientists currently estimate that the Chromosaurus measured around 9 to 10.5 meters, or 30 to 34 feet in length. In 2009, it was also estimated that the Chromosaurus weighed up to 11,000 kilograms. That's about two and a half times heavier than a Tyrannosaurus rex just floating about in the ocean. The Chromosaurus maneuvered itself with four powerful flippers. Between its two limbs were a massive mesh of belly ribs, which provided huge additional strength and support while swimming. Scientists indicate that this would have led the Chromosaurus to be incredibly fast and powerful whilst making its way through the ocean. On top of this, the Chromosaurus had five sets of teeth in its arsenal. Five sets, that's the equivalent of a giant wood chipper floating around the bottom of the sea. There's no doubting that the Chromosaurus was an incredibly capable predator, and evidence suggests that they feasted on sea turtles, large marine reptiles, and even giant squid. Squid? Well, 
it's not looking too good for the Kraken. But of course we have to remember that descriptions of the Kraken are relegated to ancient texts and no living evidence of the beast has ever actually been found, leading the majority of scientists to the conclusion that the Kraken plainly just doesn't exist. However, all of those sailors must have seen something, right? Many people believe that the legend of the Kraken originated from sightings of giant squid, which grow between 40 to 50 feet in length. Which means already the Kraken squid has the leg up over the Kronosaurus by pure measurement alone. But as we know it, size isn't everything. Or, well, maybe it is. Because ancient texts paint a far, far different story to the true scale of the Kraken. According to an old Icelandic saga, the Kraken, which they refer to as Hafgufa, was the size of a small island. Descriptions are fairly vague, ranging from the length of 10 ships, which, if we use the 16 meter Viking longship as a reference, is 160 meters, all the way to a more specific length of a mile and a half long, or roughly, 1600 meters. If that's the case, then the Kronosaurus is pretty much dead in the water. By sheer size alone, we can't even imagine how much the Kraken would weigh. If we go by the Kronosaurus's weight of 11,000 kilograms at 10 meters in length, then a maximum size Kraken at 1600 meters would rack up over roughly 1 billion kilograms. Now, our math is definitely a little bit off, but that's the equivalent of a couple of New York skyscrapers just floating about in the ocean with teeth and tentacles. How would a Kronosaurus go about trying to even attack that? It'd be like a gnat trying to take on an elephant. It kind of makes sense then when looking at the Kraken's alleged methods of attack. Now, the Kraken doesn't boast any supernatural abilities, poison, or dark magical curses. As we've discovered, the Kraken's true terror lies in its sheer size. Imagine dropping two New York skyscrapers into the Pacific Ocean. Can you even fathom what kind of force that would impact on the sea? Every time the Kraken would submerge, the mother of all whirlpools would swallow up whatever's in his wake. Now, we know the Kronosaurus is a pretty strong swimmer, but even they would become mere playthings to the Kraken's pool party. Okay, so things are looking pretty rough for the Kronosaurus. So, how about we try and give them a fighting chance? Let's take a look at the magical power of teamwork. Now, paleontology has shown us that the Kronosaurus was incredibly similar to modern day crocodiles. And as recent studies have found, crocodiles are highly intelligent animals that use complex communication tools to hunt in packs. That's right, the only chance that this guy has to take down the Kraken is if he has a busload of friends along for the ride. Now, that might seem a little bit cheap, but come on, this guy's desperate. All's fair in fictional war. If the Kronosaurus was a patient ambush hunter and had carefully orchestrated a detailed, complex strategy to attack a tick, no, you know, scratch that. You know what? The Kraken wins. Of course it wins. It's impossible. Maybe if the Kronosaurus evolved over millions of years into humanoids, discovered atomic energy, built a nuclear bomb, and then nuked the Kraken while it slept on its ocean bed, then maybe, just maybe, the Kronosaurus would win. But no, there we have the answer to what if a Kronosaurus fought the Kraken. The Kraken would win. Both Yogg-Sothoth and Cthulhu are mythical beings from the work of fiction Cthulhu Mythos by H.P. Lovecraft. They are both extremely powerful and both quite mysterious. One an all-seeing god, another a giant extraterrestrial with psychic powers. But what would happen if both of these beings battled it out for supremacy? Who would win? That's the question we're asking today on Life's Biggest Questions. I'm going to have to briefly explain traits of both of these beings so that we're all on the same page. According to H.P. Lovecraft, the Yogg-Sothoth is a powerful cosmic deity whose appearance is a conglomeration of glowing spheres. It is said that even looking at Yogg-Sothoth or learning too much about it can drive mere humans to the brink of insanity, which is why physical descriptions of it are limited. Yogg-Sothoth is quite possibly one of the most powerful of Lovecraft's deities, sometimes referred to as the Key and the Gate. It is an outer god, meaning it is a god to gods. Yogg-Sothoth sees and knows all. It exists and has existed at all points in time in the multiverse. If you wish to please Yogg-Sothoth, you would have to either offer it a human sacrifice or eternal servitude. It should also be noted that Yogg-Sothoth dwells outside Outside our reality and doesn't obey our laws of physics. For more information on Yogg-Sothoth, I highly recommend you check out our video, What if Yogg-Sothoth was real? Clickable on the screen right now. 
Now let's move on to Cthulhu, who is likely the most iconic being from the Cthulhu mythos. Cthulhu is the most powerful of the Great Old Ones. For those who are unfamiliar with the term, the Old Ones refers to a group of extraterrestrials that now lie dormant. Cthulhu is the great priest of this race, and he also once ruled the Earth. That being said, Cthulhu is a child of gods, not an actual god. According to the Cthulhu mythos, the Great Old Ones are not the most powerful gods in existence. In terms of appearance, Cthulhu is a monster that's a cross between a man, an octopus and a dragon. He has an octopus like head, a base made up of scaly feelers, and is hundreds of meters tall. Like yogg sothoth if a human even so much as looked at Cthulhu, they would go insane. Cthulhu also has impressive psychic abilities. He's extremely intelligent and he also possesses the ability to invade dreams. If you're interested in hearing some more about Cthulhu, I highly recommend you check out our video, What If Cthulhu Was Real, also clickable on the screen right now. So now that you know a little about each of them, let's explore what would happen if yogg sothoth and Cthulhu decided to battle it out. Even though Cthulhu is a very powerful monster, based on his descriptions, he doesn't have godlike strength, unlike yogg sothoth who is said to be all powerful. Lovecraft did create a hierarchy when it came to his entities. If it were a contest between two earthly beings, it would be somewhat of a fair fight. However, as I stated previously, yogg sothoth is an outer god. It dwells outside our reality. It sees everything, past, present, and future, and can also manipulate any place and time that it wishes. To Cthulhu, yogg sothoth is god. If Cthulhu ever dared to take on yogg sothoth yogg would know every move Cthulhu would make before he made it. He would know the outcome of the fight like how he knows how the universe began and how it will end. Only an outer god could defeat another outer god like yogg sothoth The outer gods include both yogg sothoth Nyar Lothotep, and Azathoth. They are so powerful that they literally do not care about earthly beings. We are like ants to them. Perhaps if Cthulhu sought the help of Azathoth, who is said to be the most powerful of the outer gods, he could defeat yogg sothoth But that sounds like a topic for another life's biggest questions, and frankly, I'm pretty tired of saying all these weird names. King of the land versus queen of the skies. Another day, another death match between two of history's super predators. Sometimes we talk about science, sometimes we talk about history, politics, pop culture. But at the moment, we are talking all about the long dead ancient killers from the animal kingdom fighting. Why? Because you guys seem to really be into it. What can I say? Terror bird. I mean, it has the word terror in its name. Yeah, I'm scared. Officially called the Forest. Acids. I may not have said that right. Let's just stick with Terror Bird. Terror Birds were the top predator in South America for nearly 60 million years before they died out 2.5 million years ago. The biggest breed of Terror Bird were the Titanus. They were as fast as an ostrich and had insanely powerful feet, as well as some kind of cross between a pickaxe and a meat cleaver for a beak. These killing machines were 3 meters tall and weighed 150 kilograms. These birds were killing machines that killed in a number of brutal ways. They would stab prey in the back of the head from a height. They would also use their feet as weapons to kick and stamp and hold things down as they pecked prey to death. In some instances, they would also pick up some preys with their beaks and smash them repeatedly on the ground till they died. Anyone feeling great about the terror bird? So, how did these killing machines even die out if they were so powerful? When the land bridge was created in Central America, terror birds were one of the species that migrated in the Great American Interchange. They actually started meeting the saber toothed cats, which led to competition for prey, although it is thought the final nail in the coffin was climate change. Saber toothed tigers aren't actually related to tigers that we know today, but they were insane killer cats. They primarily lived in North America, but they also made it across South America when the land bridge formed. The saber tooths lived from 2.5 million years ago to 10,000 thousand years ago, with their reign on earth much shorter than the terror birds, although more recent. These frightening predators did actually cross over with the terror birds, albeit briefly, so maybe they did meet and fight. The saber tooths were smaller in terms of height than the tall terror birds, they were around 1.2 meters in length, although they were weightier at around 400 kilos. We already know how terror birds fight, but what about the saber tooths? Well, these fast agile killers would stalk and ambush their prey, biting them with their huge 28 centimeter long fangs as they held them down with their paws and bit them. There is probably one question on everyone's lips ahead of the fight. Terror birds, can they fly? Sadly for their top trump card, they can't, which actually really evens up the fight. We know that both animals were fast, but the 
Tiger did have the edge in the weight division. Who would have had an early advantage would depend on who attacked first. The tiger could launch at the bird and take it down with a hard, powerful bite to the leg, and it probably could hold the much lighter bird down with its paws. As it delivered powerful, sharp death blows through the bird's flesh, it could probably hold on to the bird. On the other hand, the terror bird could run at the tiger, smashing its skull with succinct, powerful blows to the back of the head as it looms above, pecking. It could not use its pick up and smash technique as the saber tooth would simply be too heavy for the bird, and usually they hunted much smaller animals when killing. Of course, it's worth mentioning here that the pair would not usually fight as they would prey on smaller animals as it is, they're much easier to kill. While these two apex predators seem quite evenly matched, I have to say I'm leaning towards the saber tooth being the victor here in a one on one match. However, there is one big advantage the terror bird has. While the saber tooth was a solitary predator, the terror bird was thought to hunt in packs, using low frequency communications to talk with one another, talk to their terror bird mates. Like in life, having friends is a bit of a game changer. In a group, the terror birds could easily destroy the solitary saber tooth. But is one against three fair? The Kieran Crowen is a sea monster so big it fed on seven whales a day, a master of disguise and an artful killer. The Kraken, a legendary octo monster, a giant killer squid that could take down huge ships and their entire crew for breakfast without a second thought. But what if these two sea beasties fought? Well, you're about to find out. I love me a sea adventure and I love some good Scottish Gaelic folklore. I also love me some good Kraken chat, so I'm feeling this video is going to be a banger. The Kieran Crowen, if you hadn't heard of it, is a sea dwelling beastie, a sea monster from Gaelic folklore, which I assume means that the monster lived around the Scotch coastline in the North Sea, perhaps travelling up to the Norwegian Sea and taking a swim into the top of the North Atlantic. Kieran Crowen was said to be a giant fish destroyer who filled its stomach with seven whales, but also developed a taste for human flesh. The monster has had many depictions, but by and large, is said to be a giant serpent like sea dragon. Rawr. The Kieran Crowen was said to be a shapeshifter with the ability to transform itself into a shoal of smaller silver fish. Why? So when fishermen came to catch the fish, it could eat old Captain Matey instead. Sneaky. The Kraken is a popular maritime legend stemming from Norse legend and is perhaps more well known than stories of Kieran Crowen. The Kraken has been discussed across the seas. The Kraken was not just discussed by Norse explorers. The legend of the Kraken has spread across across the seas. Nonetheless, the assumed home of the Kraken is up off the coast of Norway and Greenland. Because of how often the Kraken has been discussed in literature, we are able to paint a clearer picture of what it might have looked like. Old Krakmeister was thought to have been a giant squid, although just how giant is up for debate. Some say the Kraken was the length of 10 ships, others say it was half a mile long, with unlucky sailors mistaking the beast for an island. The dangers with a Kraken are twofold. One, it's wake creates a whirlpool so big it sucks ships down, and two, if you stumble across it, it might just eat you. It's important to note in literature that it appears that those who have met their end via the Kraken have had the misfortune of coming across it rather than being hunted by the beastie, which sets it apart from the Kieran Crowen, who certainly sounds more predatory. Ok, but nobody is worried about humans being eaten or ships being wrecked here, we're here to hear what would happen if these two monsters fought. Firstly, where would this go down? I know that I said that we don't care about humans and ships and stuff, but like in reality, what are we gonna do? We're gonna want to make some space because if the death match of two powerful sea monsters actually was near shores, it could create a huge tidal wave. If humans were lucky, the pair would fight in the mutually accessible and human free North Atlantic. But if they fought between the North Sea and the Norwegian, their respective homes, the people of Norway, Iceland, Northern Ireland, and Scotland had better watch out. I suppose the question already poses how this would go down. What if the Kieran Crone fought the Kraken? The Kieran Crone is almost undoubtedly the creature that would start the beef. The Kraken is mainly just minding its own business, being a really big octopus. Honestly, we don't know exactly how big each creature is, so it makes pitting them against each other in terms of size pretty hard, but let's assume they're roughly in the same weight category. The Kraken doesn't have any superpowers, which honestly makes me worry for it in this match. The Kieran Crone can shapeshift 
easily confusing the Kraken, as well as making escape very possible. The Kraken does have many a tentacle with which to capture the Scottish beast, but if it can shapeshift, I'm imagining the Kieran Crone is a bit of a Houdini. The Kraken is an octopus, which means it must be pretty smart. Perhaps it could trick the Kieran Crone by swimming ahead and creating one of its trademark whirlpools to suck the beast down. Ultimately, though, the supernatural elements of the Kieran Crone honestly have to give it the edge. Plus, it sounds like a killer, what with all that bloodlust and the ability to transform. Is there any contest here? Kieran Crowan wins, but the real question is would its victory make it even more blood hungry? If so, we better watch out.